Hi, I'm Bill O'Reilly. Thanks for watching us tonight. Congratulations to the Chicago Cubs World Series champs. Joe Madden and his crew deserve it. And we'll talk about it in the tip of the day. But first, Hillary Clinton could lose the election. That is the subject of this evening's Talking Points memo. Most of the polls say the same thing. Donald Trump's gaining momentum. FNC's analysis of the Electoral College now has Hillary Clinton only slightly above the 270 votes needed to win. So there should be grave concern in the Clinton camp. The reason the secretary may lose is that the tipping point may have been reached. If you are familiar with Malcolm Gladwell's theory, bad things mount up, then suddenly, at a dramatic moment, everything comes crashing down. For Hillary Clinton, the FBI may be the tipster. Not only is the email investigation now reopened, but Fox News is reporting that the Clinton Foundation also under heavy scrutiny by federal investigators. We'll give you the facts on both stories in just a few moments. It seems many voters are becoming disenchanted with the entire Clinton situation because the controversies are seemingly endless. We're not talking about fervent Democrats or liberal zealots. We're talking about ordinary Americans who vote on the basis of what is best for the country. Now, early in the campaign, Talking Points gave Hillary Clinton some good advice, and that was to speak directly to the American people through a series of interviews, explain the email stuff, spell out the Clinton Foundation controversy, give straight answers to straight questions. The Clinton campaign told us she would likely do an interview with the factor. That has turned out not to be true. Even when Mrs. Clinton did appear here on the phone, Talking about the terror attack in France, she indicated she was going to speak with me. But this isn't personal. Since September 12th, Hillary Clinton has not done one, not one, national television interview with a journalist. She is hiding. She is also imperious, feeling that she's above questioning. And if elected president, you can expect very little interaction with the press or with the folks from Secretary Clinton. So all of this, the continuing ethical problems, the detachment from the voters, the attitude that she deserves the presidency, all of it is playing into her declining poll numbers. There are five days left before the vote. We expect more hacking leaks and perhaps some new personal attacks on Donald Trump. But the only thing holding Mrs. Clinton up right now is Mr. Trump's negatives. But they will not mean very much if the marginal Clinton support stays home on Election Day. And that's a very real possibility. Summing up, Hillary Clinton thought she had the election locked up, but she could very well find herself defeated come November 8th. The tipping point may have been reached. And that's a memo. Now for the top story. Two investigations concerning Secretary Clinton. Fox News anchor Brett Baer broke the story last night. The FBI is seriously looking at the Clinton Foundation, trading access for charitable money. Joining us from Washington with the latest Chief D.C. correspondent, James Rosen. All right, James, what do you have for us tonight? So, Bill, we all know that the FBI has reopened the investigation into Secretary Clinton's private server. Separate from that, a well-placed source inside the FBI confirmed to me tonight that there are indeed two parallel FBI probes here, the email case and the Clinton Foundation case, with the latter probe ongoing for more than a year, as Brett Baer and others have been reporting. I am told that the consensus view among FBI agents is that the Foundation case is stronger than the email case now, but chiefly because of the way the email case was handled. In particular, the agents are just furious that James Comey and the DOJ, for example, authorized immunity deals for both Cheryl Mills and Heather Samuelson, two lawyers for Hillary Clinton, the latter of whom actually reviewed all the emails for her, rather than using the immunity grant with one of them as leverage to have her flip right, and, and deliver and let the me stop you there. And the other thing is we know that there was no grand jury, so everything had to funnel through a political process in the Justice Department run by Loretta Lynch, the Attorney General, who is under deep suspicion now that she is covering for Hillary Clinton. But let's get back to the foundation. The essential uh, FBI um, allegation or, or what they're interested in is that as Secretary of State, Hillary Clinton allowed people to donate money and then they got favors in return. Is that what it is? 
Right. This would be called, in, in what the agents would, the terminology they would use, is a public corruption case. They're investigating whether there were improper relationships between Hillary Clinton's State Department and the Clinton Foundation, where, the allegation goes, if you gave a certain amount of money to the foundation, uh, then you received favors of some kind, some benefit from the Clinton State Department. Yes. We should point out that all the right. Clinton Very campaign serious. and the Clinton Foundation all deny any wrongdoing. I have one other update for you, one other point. I wanted to make uh, re with regard to the email case which again has been reopened by the FBI I asked this source inside the FBI a veteran with decades of experience if there's a single individual within the FBI who believes that the Secretary of State's private server wasn't hacked and this source said no and added it's pretty certain she was hacked yeah, and, this and, and there told are me, fingerprints uh, that they can see if it was hacked but I don't want to do speculation Rosen tonight when you get who's hacked it and what they got then that's going to be huge. And we appreciate it very much, as always. Now let's go to Ed Henry, who's also in Washington this evening. He's following the email situation. So what's going on in that precinct, Henry? Bill, a, a couple of major developments, and here why, here's why it matters. Number one, we're hearing tonight that as the FBI sifts through some of the emails on Anthony Weiner's laptop, that some of them, in fact, connect uh, between Hillary Clinton and Huma Abedin. Why is that significant? Last weekend, when this story broke about James Comey sort of renewing this, the Clinton camp tried to spin it and say, this is just whom his emails, nothing to do with Hillary Clinton, and it's probably just duplicate stuff we've seen in previous document dumps. An FBI, FBI source telling me tonight, no, they're getting hits on things that are new that they had not seen before. So it raises more questions. All right, about let, let me stop you then. Yeah. <clears throat> so, so what would uh, the FBI would be looking for would be national security information going from Hillary Clinton's private server Right, which we yep. all know she's used and she's admitted it, into Miss Abedin's computer, all right, mm -hmm. which Anthony Weiner has access to. And he did not have a security clearance. Right. He was no longer in Congress in recent years. So why would he have access to that? Here's another big thing, a big development today from WikiLeaks. I'm sifting through all these emails, and there's a couple there in which they were, Clinton's own aides in 2015 were raising questions about, did she really turn over all official email like she told the public? Remember, she said only deleted the personal ones that had to do with yoga routines. Her own staff was doubting that, and they had a question amongst themselves. What did she call personal stuff with Huma Abedin and Cheryl Mills because they're close friends well Hillary Clinton never answered that why is that significant it ties back to what James Rosen just reported Huma Abedin uh, was at the State Department on the payroll her emails not all of them some could have been personal but most of them should have been official business taxpayers were paying her salary at the State Department along with Cheryl Mills but they also Abedin and Mills did work at the Clinton Foundation yeah. they were paid by them and that ties back because when you <laughs> ask James Rosen about favors between the State mm. Department and Clinton Foundation donors, wouldn't the emails of Huma Abedin and Cheryl Mills yeah. who are at the nexus of that be well, we a don't little want to speculate. interesting? Again, yeah. we want to keep it where it is, but I, I will say this, it might be quite an inauguration if Secretary Clinton wins. It could be a lot of other things happening other than the oath. That is the big question. Let me give you a quick bit of new information. Quick. FBI source I yeah. spoke to tonight said, look, the big question is not what happens today or tomorrow before the election. It's what happens the day after the election. Yeah. Are these FBI agents who feel privately tell us they have been handcuffed in this investigation? Will they be allowed to follow the facts? Or, or if Hillary Clinton is elected the day after, will they be told? Well, they, you know, done, there's a done. whistleblower law in this country, and also FBI. FBI agents have certainly have access to the media if they want it. Ed Henry, thank you very much. One footnote, James Rosen's book, A Torch Kept Lit, Great Lives of the 20th Century, featuring William F. Buckley Jr., big bestseller. You might want to check it out. Next on the Rundown, brand new polling. We have the numbers for you. Then another possible scandal, big shot at the Justice Department, was leaking stuff to the Clinton campaign about the email investigation. Will you hear this? It never ends, does it? Upcoming. Campaign 2016 segment tonight, the latest polling. According to CBS News, Hillary Clinton leads Donald Trump by three points in the national race. LA Times daily tracking poll has Trump up by five. ABC News tracking poll, Clinton by two. Rasmussen, Trump by three. Investors Business Daily has raised a tie. Got a headache yet? Mm -hmm. On the state front, WBUR poll in New Hampshire has Trump up by one. University of Denver has it a tie in Colorado. Monmouth poll in Utah is Trump up by six in that state. 
Joining us now from Washington, Bob Kisak, editor of The Hill Newspaper in Chicago, Tom Bevan, executive editor of Real Clear Politics. So, Mr. Bevan, everybody goes to you and your crew uh, for the averages. So over the last two weeks, Trump's really cut into Secretary Clinton's lead, correct? Absolutely. We've seen two things happening. One, we've seen Republicans coming home uh, to Trump. In a lot of these states that were uh, you know, had been a little bit more competitive than, than we'd seen them in previous cycles, places like Georgia and Missouri and Texas and Arizona. Uh, Trump has really expanded his lead because Republicans have come home to him. And then the other thing that's happened, I think, and you mentioned this in your talking points, Bill, is those marginal voters, the folks who, yeah. you know, millennials, for example, who they liked Sanders, they were looking at Johnson, they had warmed to Hillary Clinton over the previous uh, couple of weeks, they might be uh, you know, shying away from her. And as you mentioned, if, if, if enough of those folks in some of these key battleground states, if they stay home, um, that could be a, a real trouble spot for her campaign. Okay. Um, now, uh, Mr. Cusack, you have a situation where Fox News is now saying that Hillary Clinton's got 283 electoral votes and she's got mm -hmm. the so-called blue wall. States like California, New York, always vote Democrat, Massachusetts. But that's only 13 over. So mm -hmm. if she if uh, Trump can peel off Pennsylvania, for example, he's president if he yeah. if he cleans the table on the states that are sympathetic to him. Correct. Yeah, absolutely. If he wins Pennsylvania, I mean, then he then there is probably a president Trump because he's looking decent in Ohio right now. Florida's very close. I think he's got to win Ohio and Florida sure. if he doesn't win Pennsylvania. But overall, I do think he's going to have to pick pick up one upset along the way, whether that's a Wisconsin or a Michigan where Hillary Clinton had to campaign. Uh, she's a little nervous about that state. That's usually a blue state. So there's no doubt about it. We were talking a couple weeks ago about her getting 350 electoral votes. It has gone down significantly. The FBI yeah. thing hurts her without a doubt. But if but she's I so nervous, Trump had momentum Tuesday. before that. If she's so nervous, why isn't she campaigning very much? She did two events today, both in North Carolina. Yesterday, one in Arizona. She, Trump is like everywhere. He's going door to door. He's cutting your lawn. Um, and, she, you know, she's very, very few places. He got Sanders out. You got Obama out. Yeah. She's got, you know, all the surrogates out. But, I, you know, I don't know if she's seeing the urgency. It looks like a Romney situation. Now, we do have some new polling I want to run by uh, you, Mr. Bevan. Arizona, Trump is up by five now. And uh, I don't even know what poll it is, but I just got it. Georgia, Trump up only by one. That's interesting. Texas, Trump up by nine. Those are new in tonight. Um, do you see any states, Mr. Bevan, where Trump, where Romney won, where Trump might not win? No, I think he's going to win probably all those states. Again, those are the NBC Marist polls that just came out, but we have other data that has his leads uh, much better than that in those states. Utah is another one where, you know, Evan McMullen's polling pretty strong. We had data out of Utah showing Trump uh, up six. I think his lead yeah. is sort of solidified there as well. And those are the only states. I mean, the, the, the key state for him, obviously, is Romney. Uh, I'm sorry, is North Carolina. That's the one battleground state you that bet. Romney won. And Trump's got to keep it in his column. And that, but the latest that race, polling from there has Trump up. He's winning in North it, Carolina. It, what's What's interesting, Bill, is in Florida and North Carolina, there's a variance in the polls. We've got two yep. polls showing no. uh, showing Trump ahead, and we've got two polls showing Clinton ahead. And the net of that, in our average, is that it's tied. So I think that really is a toss-up state, and both campaigns are, are certainly treating it that way. When are you guys going to be uh, wanting to make a prediction, dude? Because I want to get both of you on the record. It's Sunday night, Monday. <laughs> you guys going to make predictions? Are you going to do that? <laughs> Listen, I, I, think, Wednesday I, think, morning? I think I can wait till Monday. Yeah. Monday? <laughs> Wednesday morning, yeah. That's what I'll do. You know, I told you. Um, all right. Monday, I'm, I'm going to hold you guys to it. We'll check in with you, and we appreciate it. Directly ahead, another outrageous story. Justice Department official feeding the Clinton campaign information about the email investigation. Wait till you hear this. Then later, Waters talking to the folks in West Virginia about their country. We're coming right back. Two Serum segment tonight, another outrageous situation concerning the Hillary Clinton campaign. It never ends. This man, Peter Kadzik, top official at the Justice Department. Hackers exposing Clinton campaign chief John Podesta's email, that's the WikiLeaks deal, put out this missive from Kadzik to Podesta. Quote, there is a House Judiciary Committee oversight hearing today where the head of our civil division will testify. 
likely to get questions on State Department emails. Another filing in the FOIA case went in last night or will go in this AM that indicates it'll be a while before the State Department posts the emails, unquote. Skadzik is leaking to Podesta and he's still working at the State Department. What is going on? I'm angry about this. With us now, our true serum correspondent, Eric Shannon, Shannon Bream. So I am annoyed mm -hmm. that this man, Kadzik, is still working there after he, he has no right to do this. He, he, he emails Podesta, mm -hmm. tipping him on what's going to happen in the Judiciary Committee hearing. Do you ever, you've been in Washington a long time. Do you ever hear anything? You know, else? just the fact that the subject line of the email said, heads up, should give people pause about why would you be giving someone heads up inside the Clinton campaign when you're working in the Justice Department? Yeah, you're supposed to be seeking the truth, not giving uh, somebody under investigation a heads up on it. But he's still working there. Yes, he, he hasn't been disciplined as far as we know. No, no, has no. He? no, no, no. He's still very much involved, and he and Podesta go way back. We talked about how they were Georgetown Law School roommates. Yeah, they're pals. Yeah, I mean they were good friends. They were classmates. Uh, but there are emails that have shown that they've had dinner together the day after. She testified about Benghazi on the Hill. They were at a dinner together. So there is a lot of overlap. When Podesta was in the White House and he got caught up in some accused of making false statements about the Monica Lewinsky scandal, Kadzik represented him. Kadzik also. But came Kadzik wasn't in the Justice Department. Then no, he was, no, a, no. Private he was attorney. a private attorney. So Kadzik worked for Podesta to try to get him off on another beef. What does Kadzik do in the Justice Department now? How, how high up is he? Well, he works as an assistant attorney general and he's sort of a liaison between Congress and the DOJ. Now, there's been a request by Republican lawmakers at one point asking them to appoint special counsel in this Hillary Clinton email situation, yeah. and that's something that Kadzik turned down. So there is, although so he had the authority to turn down a special counsel that was requested. He told Republican lawmakers, so he's no. a big shot, this guy Kadzik. Yeah. So Loretta Lynch, what does she say? The Attorney General, she should have suspended this guy right off the bat, right? He's very close. Listen to the Clintons. You know that because there's also this connection with Mark Rich because Kadzik was lobbying Mar uh, Podesta when he was was White House Chief of Staff and working and Kazik directly was a private that. attorney to he get was. this weasel off, which he did, and, and uh, that's what Sean's going to do in a minute. So bottom line, let's recap, Kazik still working at the State Department, yep. despite violating every ethical tenet you could possibly violate by tipping off uh, Podesta to this uh, hearing and what was going to happen. And uh, he just uh, sings a song, and the Attorney General, who now we are is on our not good list, uh, just lets it go. This is called corruption. That's what this is called. All right. Thank you, Shannon. Now let's get over to you, Sean. Um, in 2001, you interviewed President Clinton about this seedy, sleazy Mark Rich pardon, correct? I did. Roll the tape. Mr. President, did you hand out the pardons as favors to political supporters? Absolutely not. So now, the Mark Rich pardon back in the news, why? Because there's a website or a, t a Twitter site that the FBI has called the FBI Records Vault. It's been dead, totally dormant for more than a year, since right. last October 8th, 2015. And on Sunday night, it suddenly comes to life. Kicks out uh, an old tax case about Fred Trump, Donald's father, and also kicks out this. These are the FBI files that it has heavily redacted about, about the Mark, Mark Rich, Rich and why he pardoned. got a pardon. Now, Mark Rich, when you said Denise, that's his wife. Yes who gave millions of dollars to the DNC, right? Yeah, De uh, Mar uh, Denise Rich was his ex-wife, well-known New York socialite, lived on Fifth Avenue, a songwriter. She donated a million dollars to Democratic causes, including Hillary's 2000 campaign. And money to and his library, right? $450,000. To the Clinton years, Library. To the Clinton Foundation, which was then going to build the library. All right, and then after she donated almost a million and a half, suddenly her ex-husband, living in Switzerland, yes. all right, he, he couldn't come back here, he would have been arrested, gets a magical pardon. He's the worst tax cheat in U.S. history. Yeah, he gave $48 right? million dollars worth. And that was after Denise gave the money to the Clinton Library and the DNC. Yeah, he was pardoned on the last day that the president was in office All at right. the time. Uh, no charges. It was closed in 2005. You know who the prosecutor at one point was? James Comey. Mm -hmm. James Director Comey the, was supposed to prosecute, he, but didn't prosecute because yeah. no charges were no, brought he, in, the, in the case. He oversaw it earlier in, yeah. the, late, in the late 80s. By right. the time the charges weren't uh, 
I mean, your head blows off. You know, I, I feel sorry <laughs> for you guys watching the program because it's just one corrupt thing after the other. They are allegations, but the evidence is so overwhelming. You're seeing emails. You're seeing, you know, quid pro quos all over the place. All right, we appreciate you guys. Thank you very much. Play more Heads of Factor Moves along this evening. Bernie Goldberg will analyze how Trump and Hillary are handling the national media right now. That should be interesting. And Waters in West Virginia asking about the State of the Union. What don't you like about America? I hate to get in on immigration and everything, but they catch them, they take them to the detention center and then turn them loose. Catch and release. Like a fish. We hope you stay tuned for those reports. Personal story segment tonight. Last week we spoke with Elvira Salazar, an anchor woman for Mega TV in Miami. She was supposed to get an interview with Donald Trump, but he kind of walked out on it. That interview was never rescheduled. Ms. Salazar joins us now here in New York City. Are you angry about this? No, not really. I think no. it was the right thing uh, for them to do. I think it was the right move. Um, you know, he called me uh, on the phone Tuesday night and he said he wanted to apologize for not talking to us, that he wanted us to know that he did want to talk to uh, the Hispanic community, but that at this hour he needed to stay focused and he needed to uh, not get off track. All right. So, so he was polite. He was a gentleman. He called you and he explained, I would be teed off, but you're much nicer than I am. <laughs> um, now, as far as uh, Hispanics in Florida are concerned, um, he needs, Donald Trump needs, a big turnout on his behalf to win that state. Do you think it's going to happen? Oh, I, I think he, Cuban Americans could really help him tremendously. In the last two months, he has gained 20 points among Cuban American voters Why? in South Florida. I think President Obama has helped him tremendously with his Cuba policies. And basically what happened uh, two weeks ago at the United Nations, for the first time in 55 years, the United States has not voted pro the embargo against Cuba. All right. So Cuban Americans in Dade County, where you live in Miami and throughout the state, follow this stuff very, very closely, whereas a lot of Americans, they don't know what happened at the Absolutely. U.S. Absolutely. So after yes. President Obama didn't vote um, to uphold some of the embargo, Cubans got angry and that's going to help Donald Trump? I would imagine that is the, the the straw that broke the camel's back. So you why Dade County is usually Democratic though. It, it is goes. except that voting block called the Cuban Americans. And you think they're going to go for Trump, the majority? I would say that right now, sixty percent of the Cubans would go for Trump. Wow. Uh, well, it so was, he should have talked to you. Well, <laughs> I mean, that would have helped him though. He needs Florida desperately. Yeah, right? and and, that, and I think that's one of the reasons why he really wanted to talk to us. But I think that the wiser political move would have been five months ago, six months ago, when he became the nominee, to go to the heart of the community, not only to the Cuban Americans in, in Miami, to the Puerto Ricans in Central Florida, to the Mexicans in California. And and talk directly face to face about yeah. those thorny on shows issues. like yours. Okay. Well, I'm now the last time we had you on a program, um, we had a little bit of debate about a, a wall. You don't feel that the wall is necessary on the southern border. Of course, it's a big part of Trump's campaign. You want to e verify and 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 do it that way. But I support the wall not only to keep people out, and I think that that has to happen. We have to have an orderly immigration process, but for the narcotics. I mean, you know, Miami is a wash in drugs, you know that. And, and, and the drugs are coming from Mexico now, not from Colombia the way they used to. And they're coming across that southern border and it make it a lot more difficult if you had a big barrier down there. Well, maybe yes, maybe no. But I don't know how, no. Well, because when you have technology and you have more border patrol, but that is, that is a, a position that I think has a lot of merit. But then you have this other one that I think we talk about a lot more than the, the illegals that are jumping the wall or defying the desert. See what I want to do, and, and we'll just, I have to go, but I want to do is have a wall down there to discourage poor people who are being exploited and being assaulted when they come up from Central America and Southern Mexico by these terrible smugglers, people smugglers. They brutalize these people. And I think if that barrier were there, it'd make it tougher for the uh, coyotes and it'd make it a lot tougher for the cartels to get drugs in. So anyway, that's well, what when I, they jump they get rewarded with jobs. That's why I'm saying even no, I'm, verify. I'm for that. I am absolutely so for if that. So if, right. if you're going to punish one side, I think you should punch the other, which but are I the business owners. I want to protect 
the innocent people trying to get here. Let them do it legally. Thank you, Ms. Salazar, very much. Uh, nice My to pleasure. meet you. We appreciate you coming in. We come right back, Bernie Goldberg, on how Trump and Clinton are handling the national media right now. And Waters in West Virginia talking about what's good and what's bad with America. Those reports after these messages. Thanks for with us. I'm Bill O'Reilly in the Weekdays of Bernie segment tonight. As we mentioned in the Talking Points memo, Hillary Clinton has not done a single national television interview since September 12th. And this week, Donald Trump's avoiding the national TV press as well. Joining us from Miami, the purveyor of BernardGoldberg.com, Mr. Goldberg. Let's take Hillary Clinton first. Do you agree that she's being a bit imperious? Word of the day, imperious. Do you think she is? I, I do think she is. And you also said in your talking points that she's in hiding. And I think you're right on that, too. But if I were giving her advice and not a likely possibility, but if I were giving her advice, I would tell her not to do interviews with you or anybody who's serious about this. You said you wanted straight uh, answers to straight questions. Yeah. Bill, she can't give straight answers because she's too vulnerable. She she just can't do it. Well, you're convicting so her, have, though. You're convicting her of, of uh, what the FBI is investigating her for. So I'm giving her the tell presumption. Me, tell of, me what is in it for her? What is in it for her? Well, I'll tell to you, sit I'm down giving with her you. the presumption of innocence because that's the kind of guy I am. All right. Um, but, but when. Go ahead. But when she when when you ask a legitimate question. Yes. And she dances around it. Bill, I know you. Well, You're not going to sit dance? there like a pot of plant. Of course I'm going to come, I'm gonna come in and, and level uh, the move. There's not but a, why doesn't there's she a just downside. answer it? Why doesn't she because just explain too, it? Because you, she can't explain it. <laughs> I know it. I suspect you know it. You're being a little too kind right well, now. Well, no, wait, wait, and wait, I wait. Know, if and she, I know your if, audience knows it. If she, the Secretary of State, okay, and she has been on record saying, I didn't do anything wrong in the Clinton Foundation. I didn't take any money for influence. I didn't do anything in the email. It was a foolish personal mistake that I made. I'm sorry I did it. So if she, if that's true, if those denials are true, she had no, no problem going in and explaining whatever question I ask. And, and what if it's not true? Well, then she should resign and not try to be president of the United States. What do we want a, a, oh, yeah. a person who committed a felony to be leading this country? Bill, never lose that charming innocence. It, <laughs> it's it's you beautiful. Ask, it's you a beautiful You ask and thing. I answer. You know, I mean, if the woman knows she's a felon and then she's still trying to bamboozle the country, it's not, well, I mean, it, well, it's not going to be impeachment. It's going to be she's going to be in solitary confinement for 30 years. <laughs> Everything isn't a crime. Look, let, let's think one question that isn't on the daily news. And it's a legitimate question. I think you'll agree. What if you say, you know, you said, Mrs. Clinton, that when you left office in 2000, when your husband left office, you were dead broke. Those are your words, not mine. You were dead broke. Now you, you and your husband are worth over $100 million. How'd that happen in 15 That's years? That's a good question. Absolutely. And she'll say, well, yeah. we were lucky and fortunate to have people pay us to speak. And we made good investments and, and, and blah, 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 You know what that. All right, exactly. let, uh, and, you would, and you would never take that. And you know it. Well, I you'd might say, be skeptical say, say, in my, in my follow-up questioning. People say you were selling influence. Right. But I gave her advice to level with the folks. She rejected my advice. Now, Trump. Trump, you couldn't get him off TV. And now for the last week, he didn't want to be on TV anymore. What's going there? Yeah, I think that makes sense, too. I mean, in a political sense. He, if, he go, if he does an interview, except if it's an incredibly friendly interview, then the journalist controls the agenda. But if he goes to a rally where everybody loves him, he does the rally, he picks the subject, nobody's questioning him, it winds up on the local news at 6 o'clock that night in, in North Carolina or, or Ohio or wherever, and he gets his point out with no interrogation. No, I know, I know, but it, it, he reaches so many more people when he does shows like this, does, which reach millions and millions and he's, millions. He's not, he, but he's not going to win any more votes than he's already won by being on this network no, or, so sure or national television because in general. The, the not, laser not, focus not, not now. Enough. People who are, weren't paying attention now the World Series is over, they're kind of locked in. So I'm not sure that's right. Bernie, always great to uh, talk with you. Thank you. Water's on deck. The West Virginia edition. 
What do the folks there think about their country these days? Waters is next. Back at the book segment tonight, Waters World, as has been widely reported, about two thirds of Americans believe the country is headed in the wrong direction. But why? We sent Waters to West Virginia to ask the folks about what's good and what's bad with America. What's West Virginia all about? A lot of fun, clean living, hunting, fishing, camping, good people. Oh boy, is this great! Do I fit in here in West Virginia? Sure. Why not? We produce energy. I mean, coal is uh, our, our main state. Moonshine liquor. Goes down easy? <laughs> no, it don't. See you guys in the emergency room, huh? <laughs> does moonshine put hair on your chest? Yes, it does. I could use a few bottles. I'm a man. What do you think is great about this country? Our freedom. We're the home of the free people. We have uh, more ingenuity. We are. The smartest people. I believe I do have the right for free speech. I believe I do have the right to bear a firearm if I want to. What is your favorite amendment to the Constitution? Second. Do you think Hillary's going to try to come for your guns? Yes, I do. Would you ever take me hunting? Yeah, I would. I don't know if you could keep up. Why do I have to be in camouflage so the big bad quill doesn't see me? You packing any heat right now? Not right this moment. I am. Oh, good. Have you seen the gun show? Oh, yeah. <laughs> 22s don't count. <laughs> Have you seen That's the gun show? Oh, you done insulted me, and I got to kick your ass right now. In your opinion, what is great about this country? We're going to have a woman president. <laughs> what do you think we need to do to change America? Put Donald Trump in. What is great about America? that we are not going to be overcome by anybody else because we already established ourselves. Don't even let the Russians think about it. Don't even let the Muslims think about it. Boy, that escalated quickly. Do you think we're winning the war against Islamic terrorism? No, it's too widespread. Do you think you could take me? Probably. <laughs> You're probably right. What don't you like about America? I hate to get in on immigration and everything, but they catch them, they take them to the detention center and then turn them loose. Like a fish. <laughs> There's no jobs here for the people that's here. They're bringing them other people in here and it's uncalled for. What is bad right now about America? I think it's uh, the people have no hope. The health insurance problem has got to be uh, solved some way because people can't afford it. Too many people think that they're entitled to everything. We have so damn much disrespect for uh, police officers, any kind of authority. We give too much. If we would stop giving to these countries, we'd be better off. Whose world is it? Water's world. You know, you look bigger on TV. Camera adds 10 pounds. Get in my belly! Do you like my shirt? Yeah, can I have it? You just want to see me shirtless. Yeah, that's right. What she wants is a man, that girl, not some whimpering little boy. Do you know who I am? Yes. Whose world is it? Oh, no. <laughs> I can't remember. All right, here's Waters. They liked you, right? Yeah, they love me. I fit right in. Except for that one woman who wanted to kick your butt. You know? <laughs> she and, probably could have. She could have. She oh, was jacked. You don't ever, ever want to get on the wrong side of that lady. <laughs> no. No. No, she was a corrections right officer. Um, would you say that West Virginia is Trump territory? Well, according to the polls, he's up by 20. 20 in So, West I mean, yeah. Obama's war on coal has been effective. Well, Hillary Clinton also made a comment about, yeah. you know, she's going to put the coal miners out of business. Yeah, now. they're already it? half at it. That was the end of, uh, of uh, West Virginia. Um, but I'm glad that you were accepted by, by the uh, West Virginians <laughs> because they don't accept people easily. Well, you know? they're a friendly people, and they'll even accept me, right. despite what I'm wearing. Okay, now, uh, are we going to get letters or no? I, I hope not. You were nice. <laughs> there is no offense. Country people, we love them. We do. Jesse Waters, everybody. A quick reminder that Waters has now joined Miller and me, your humble correspondent, for the Spin Stops Here tour next year. We'll see everybody in Tulsa, Oklahoma, January 13th. Reading, Pennsylvania, Saturday, January 14th. Then on to Omaha, Nebraska, March 24th. Tacoma Dome in Washington State, March 25th. 
In my home field, the theater at Westbury on Long Island, June 17th, right in front of Father's Day. Tickets make great Christmas and Hanukkah gifts, which we're doing it now, so you can get them. Shows will sell out, and you can check it out on BillOReilly.com. Fact or tip of the day, what we can all learn from the Chicago Cubs. The tip, moments away. Back to tip of the day, the Chicago Cubs teach the world a lesson in a moment. But first, as you know, our website, BillOReilly.com, is in business to help worthy charities and also to get you some solid information and great gifts for the holiday season. So we have a brand new line of Christmas and Hanukkah stuff. Get an early jump. Check it on out. You'll like it. Now the mail. Dwayne Osborne, La Merida, California. Mr. O'Reilly, one moment you suggest that Hillary Clinton might check the oath of office with handcuffs dangling from her wrist. The next you say you don't take cheap shots. That appears to be inconsistent. The cuffs line was a jest, Dwayne, but I cede your point. However, there is a very real possibility that if Secretary Clinton wins the presidency, she will be confronted with an unpleasant legal situation while in office. That's not a cheap shot. That's the truth. Michael Chain, uh, Temecula, California. Bill, I talked with Hillary Clinton, and she says she'll do the factor if you donate $6 million to the Clinton Foundation. <laughs> Colbert's looking for writers, Mike. Send a resume. Jessica, withholding her last name, Florida. I'm a producer in a TV newsroom down here, and liberals far outnumber conservatives. The left doesn't think that's biased because they believe everybody thinks the way they do. Eric Lee Perry, Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Mr. O, I take exception to your solution to gun crime. Elevating all criminal acts with guns to the federal level does not solve the problem. The states have the right to send stringent sanctions for gun criminals. And how is that working out, Eric? How's it working out? Come on. Certain states will never pass mandatory sentences on anything. It's always society's fault if a gangbanger shoots a nine-year-old. Only tough Federal penalties will stem the violent tide in this country. Robert France, Tacoma, Washington, where we'll be. Mr. O'Reilly, thank you for writing Killing the Rising Sun. I often wondered why my father had such disdain for the Japanese. He was a B-24 pilot who bombed the River Kwai Bridge. Well, my father had a measure of respect for the Japanese people, not the military, but the folks. He was in the occupation after the, the Japanese surrendered, and he was impressed by the discipline of the people. Roderick Walsh, Bridgewater, Massachusetts. Mr. O'Reilly, your style of writing brings me back to the Edward R. Murrow program. You make history interesting, and Murrow did the same thing. Well, I appreciate the compliment, Ron. And a very happy birthday to Clara Demers in North Dakota, 106 today. Wow. <laughs> You send me the menu, Clara, what you're eating, that I just want to know. And finally tonight, the uh, factor tip of the day. Congratulations to the Chicago Cubs baseball team. First time in 108 years. It looked dark, did it not? But the team did not fold. And therein lies the tip of the day. When you are behind, when you are down, when things are not going your way, get ferocious. Go out there and blast off. If you lose, so what? But if you don't give up, you could win, as the Cubs prove. Way to go, guys. Enjoy your parade tomorrow. And congratulations to the Cleveland Indians, who had a terrific season. And uh, it was really uh, an interesting competition. See, that's what America, America great. Competition. And you saw it. Chicago and Cleveland competed. And the Cubs won, and they deserved it. That is it for us tonight. Please check out the Fox News Factor website, which is different from BillOReilly.com. Also, we would like you to spout off about the factor from anywhere in the world. O'Reilly at FoxNews.com. O'Reilly at FoxNews.com. Name and town. If you wish to opine, word of the day, do not be fatuous. <laughs> right to the factor. Now, tomorrow, there is word that the Bush family is not voting for Donald Trump. Let me think about that. We're going to explore it. Tomorrow, maybe a little controversy there, but we'll have it for you on the fact. Again, thanks for watching us tonight. I'm Bill O'Reilly. Please remember that the spin stops right here, as we are definitely looking out for you. Clinton, the FBI may be the tipster.
Not only is the email investigation now reopened, but Fox News is reporting that the Clinton Foundation also under heavy scrutiny by federal investigators. We'll give you the facts on both stories in just a few moments. It seems many voters are becoming disenchanted with the entire Clinton situation because the controversies are seemingly endless. We're not talking about fervent Democrats or liberal zealots. We're talking about ordinary Americans who vote on the basis of what is best for the country. Now, early in the campaign, Talking Points gave Hillary Clinton some good advice, and that was to speak directly to the American people through a series of interviews. Explain the email stuff. Spell out the Clinton Foundation controversy. Give straight answers to straight questions. The Clinton campaign told us she would likely do an interview with the factor. That has turned out not to be true. Even when Mrs. Clinton did appear here on the phone, talking about the terror attack in France, she indicated she was going to speak with me. But this isn't personal. Since September 12th, Hillary Clinton has not done one, not one, national television interview with a journalist. She is hiding. She is also imperious, feeling that she's above questioning. And if elected president, you can expect very little interaction with the press or with the folks from Secretary Clinton. So all of this, the continuing ethical problems, the detachment from the voters, the attitude that she deserves the presidency, all of it is playing into her declining poll numbers. There are five days left before the vote. We expect more hacking leaks and perhaps some new personal attacks on Donald Trump. But the only thing holding Mrs. Clinton up right now is Mr. Trump's negatives. But they will not mean very much if the marginal Clinton support stays home on Election Day. And that's a very real possibility. Summing up, Hillary Clinton thought she had the election locked up, but she could very well find herself defeated come November 8th. The tipping point may have been reached. And that's a memo. Now for the top story. Two investigations concerning Secretary Clinton. Hi, I'm Bill O'Reilly. Thanks for watching us tonight. Congratulations to the Chicago Cubs World Series champs. Joe Madden and his crew deserve it. And we'll talk about it in the tip of the day. But first, Hillary Clinton could lose the election. That is the subject of this evening's Talking Points memo. Most of the polls say the same thing. Donald Trump's gaining momentum. FNC's analysis of the Electoral College now has Hillary Clinton only slightly above the 270 votes needed to win. So there should be grave concern in the Clinton camp. The reason the secretary may lose is that the tipping point may have been reached. If you are familiar with Malcolm Gladwell's theory, bad things mount up, then suddenly, at a dramatic moment, everything comes crashing down. For Hillary Clinton, Fox News anchor Brett Baer broke the story last night. The FBI is seriously looking at the Clinton Foundation trading access for charitable money. Joining us from Washington with the latest Chief D.C. correspondent James Rosen. All right, James, what do you have for us tonight? So, Bill, we all know that the FBI has reopened the investigation into Secretary Clinton's private server. Separate from that, a well-placed source inside the FBI confirmed to me tonight that there are indeed two parallel FBI probes here, the email case and the Clinton Foundation case, with the latter probe ongoing for more than a year, as Brett Baer and others have been reporting. I am told that the consensus view among FBI agents is that the Foundation case is stronger than the email case now, but chiefly because of the